<laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to HWM Prompt 2 Freeform Session. I'm the Samendo Alfonso with my Ali Brother King. Here to bring you some brief thoughts and takeaways on what we've seen these last couple weeks in pro wrestling. Stay tuned for the full-fledged return of the HWM Prompt 2 next week, Friday night, after the countdown. Across FTW Productions, my YouTube channel, and other stuff, too. Produced by James Kiebert, if I can get him involved, or will be also on Zoom. But once again, King, it's been a while, man. I know we had an impromptu summary of this forum after the scare. Thankfully, that's now much more Ooh. just less of a case to be aware. But these last couple of weeks, a lot's been going on in uh, pro wrestling with WWE, AEW, NJPW, to say the least. How you been, man? As we literally are just a week, two weeks away from Revolution. Hey, let's see. Battle in the Valley. And we had Pro Wrestling Noah. And we had Elimination Chamber. Yep. And now we're just tonight. Um, I'm not even going to look. You know, towards you know the 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 EC the elimination chamber side of things, because Battle in the Valley had my full attention last week with fair, you know fair fair well I with mean uh, yeah. Mercedes it, yeah with Mercedes with the Hana Hana tribute gear that, that, that cheered me up me. a little bit that that, that freaking broke me not gonna lie like <laughs> and then and then Muto's last love last final my final match with Naito in which Naito thought he was gonna main event until we had a special secret main event. That secret no main event coming. is a polite way of putting it. Damn, KG Mudo. I mean, it's no, seriously... I'm, I'm, what? <laughs> anyway, continue. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> but, uh, and of course, with a uh, uh, very decent, good Dynamite tonight. So, you can pretty much say that within the pro wrestling landscape of things, it just continues to get even crazier. Well, I mean, again, this is Pro Wrestling in 2023, and I wish I had the universal bingo card because I think I've seen everything, and yet I have not seen everything. Hard to believe. But without being said, yeah, let's go ahead and briefly talk about stuff. So I know we don't want to talk about the Limits Chamber, but, dude, we got to be realistic here because as fans, I think it's safe to say that for the first time in years, it doesn't feel like it's about just one match. It doesn't feel like it's just one match. It doesn't feel like the premium live event, the B show, as we have to call it, was not involved in building in I am generally truly excited for this year's WrestleMania. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I am too. I'm really am. And it's underneath a Triple H led WrestleMania is what's keeping me like intrigued for the most part. Yep. Because last year, well, we all experienced um, an old man with the worst stunner cell almost got killed in the ring with just one gut kick look knocked the wind out of him. But right. But now I digress from that part. <clears throat> Oscar and Bianca was Oscar winning the women's was the right choice. Cause I thought at first it was going to be Rhea and Bianca because you know they did have a tease and we thought we, and I thought we was going to get that at WrestleMania. But Rhea made up her mind. She made up her choice. She wants to face the queen, get her win back. Can't say I don't blame which her. I don't blame her. No, I don't, I don't blame her. One bit. So Oscar went in here. Oscar went in here was the right choice. Um, Logan Paul. Mm, yeah, Logan Paul. Yeah, you that's have, that. You got to um, have your celebratory exhibition matches. Just put it out there, you know. <clears throat> yep, Seth. I hope you just uh, Seth. Um, when this match does get official, I just hope you beat the tar out of him. I digress on that part. And thank you, um, Jeff Beecham, for giving me uh the privilege of saying that that was my greatest call ever when I called Logan Paul a viral <laughs> disease. Hey, I agree with that. <laughs> um, but also, um, seems like um, Bobby and Brock. Why did we have to have this again at elimination? But at elimination chamber, why did we have to have this match again? And, and now here and comes Bray Wyatt teasing. But apparently, from what I've been, from what I've heard, and what I saw on the Twitter timeline, uh, Omos wants to make a challenge to Brock Lesnar. Omos. And I'm really? and I'm over here thinking I'm like so oh what Bray Wyatt asking for that challenge he's not going to get that challenge at uh, all. Uh, <laughs> I guess like we're not? just we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna throw. Oh my gosh! And the mix like Omos and Brock. That's not what I would. Say as a WrestleMania match. That's well, guess, more like I guess. A... I guess even WrestleMania, you gotta have some sort of impromptu break. But Brock, though, 
That's a big name. Yeah. To have an impromptu match. I mean, well, no, I take that back because Taker and Cena, that did happen at WrestleMania 34. And it was less than 15 so, seconds, let's be honest. It was the, the, the so theatrics. I, so, but, um, huh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But the story with Sammy and Roman, and it, it's like, I don't want to say 2014 all over again, but it sort of has that similar feel to 2014 all over again with the whole road to wrestling with the road to WrestleMania 30. Because originally we were supposed to have Randy and Batista for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yep. But Daniel Bryan and the fans, the fans interjected Daniel Bryan and got Daniel Bryan in the match in a triple threat. And Daniel Bryan won the won both of the belts. Yep. But with this being here in 2023, do we see that get run back with that same type of feel? Or is it just going to, they're going to stick to their roots this time and not look back at their mistake and just go like one, one versus one and have Cody finish the story? I don't know. And Paul Heyman's promo pretty much made this seem pretty much a one-on-one affair when he brought family uh, into play, talking about Cody Rose versus uh, Roman Reigns. Can you be what Roman Reigns has been the last 900-plus days? Can you handle the pressure of being the WWE Undisputed Universal Champion? Which it does sound like also, but not splitting the titles up. Damn it. Uh, and as far as the Sami Zayn mm-hmm. escapade goes, we still don't know one key element as we record this. 10, 19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday night, February 22nd. Jay Uso and Kevin Owens made it clear why he and Sami Zayn may have the same objective in mind. They have their own paths, it seems, to try and make that a thing. Or official. I'm going to speak like Adam Pierce. That last line, if you're going to not do this alone, why don't you ask your best friend, Jay Uso. Jay Uso has not been seen high nor tails since that impromptu spirit by Sammy at Limited Chamber since. He wasn't even involved in the post mailing where Kevin Owens simply said, I was out there to save your family from the same embarrassment of their father being beaten down in front of the bloodline, just like my family had to deal with at the Royal Rumble where you did nothing. That's why I did that. It had nothing to do with you. Kevin Owens made that personifically clear in Ottawa, too. But yeah, uh, this WrestleMania headline, clearly it's going to be Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes as, again, the escapade. Finish the story. That's the biggest thing here. It's not about movement. It's literally a story. Finish the story. Why Sami Zayn said his story is never done, his story is clearly taken a different direction. He took his chance in front of Montreal in one of the most emotional setups I've ever seen in storytelling in my 31 years as a fan of professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever the hell you want to call it. But now he's got to focus on a different way to break the bloodline. And if he can't go after the head of Reigns, you might as well cut off the other head. In this case, maybe there's only one head because we still don't know where Jay Uso stands. So as far as I'm concerned, they're not changing the Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes dynamic. That's official. I feel we got our main event, and that has to culminate the two shows. But it's like Aaron Rich says, for the first time ever in WrestleMania history, could we see, and this would be something, Tag Team Championship main event close out night one. Despite the fact the other World Rumble winner, Rhea Ripley, does have the queen. And why I do still stand by the statement that the Royal Rumble winner clearly wins their spot in the main event at WrestleMania, which again is two days. Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair is kind of underwhelming when you think about the fact that this is a WrestleMania 36 rematch. And why Rhea Ripley has involved, Charlotte Flair has remained the same. Yep. I'm just saying, King. So again, we need to find out what Jay Uso's side of things is, and it needs to be in front of Sami Zayn, in my opinion, and then I truly think we'll know the direction. But if they could culminate night one with KO and Sami versus the Usos for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championships, that's a moment in history itself, dude. And that's a first in WrestleMania. And it seems like we're not straying away from both belts, and we're still keeping both belts on the on the same. Ah. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that it is what it is, as they say. And yeah, I think you pretty much called most of the uh, other card. It's going to be probably Logan Paul versus Seth Freaking Rollins, which, truth be told, we hate Logan Paul, but you can't deny what he's capable of in that ring. Unfortunately, just saying. Damn it. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Gunther, the Intercontinental Championship. 
I thought I still believe it could be Brock Lesnar, but the idea of a triple threat, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, with the fact that Sheamus has yet to win this title, the only title that's preventing him from being Grand Slam. Is this the way they do it and protect Goofer in defeat? Is that the way you do the Intercontinental Championship like they did back at WrestleMania uh, 34 with Seth freaking Rollins, The Miz, and freaking Finn Balor, where The Miz came as champion and lost it that night, but also he was involved in the decision. I, I, I don't know, but I still feel like Brock Lesnar versus Goofer would just be like final boss levels of a freaking match, even though Brock Lesnar and Omos right now, they're still, it's like, eh. and then I, I really rather see Brock Lesnar versus Goofer. The triple threat and Intercontinental Championship, I, I, I don't know. I got mixed feelings about that. Seems like uh, Austin Fury is making his way to face off with one John Cena to prove his case as the most effective, undisputed United States Championship. We'll see if that comes to fruition. Are we going to get Brood Edge versus Demon Finn Balor inside Hell in a Cell? Uh, to be determined. Is Rey Mysterio going to finally fight his son, and could it be the match where he pass off or risk his mask? And could that be set up as soon as Friday night, considering Rhea Ripley and Dominic Ripley are on their way there? Uh, let's see here. We talk about both women's championships. Kana, let's put it out there. Kana faced Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair, you are in serious trouble. Uh, side tangent from Elimination Chamber. Montez Ford needs to be a single champion for the end of the year. Period. 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 Needs to happen. Period. Dude, he's freaking rock personified. He did a rock bottom, nearly did the people's elbow until Bronson Reed short circuit that. All right. Monsters 4 was incredible inside the Miss Chamber. You can't deny that. I can't. Oh my gosh, man. I, I don't want to see another tag team broken up. We already talked about tag team wrestling in WWE. It doesn't matter. They don't have the depth. They don't put enough into it for Pete freaking sake. Montez Ford could be a singles champion, in my opinion. Period. Money in the bank. Although it would be weird for a face yeah. now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, I guess it makes it tight there. Uh, the way they're going with Bailey and the women's tag team championship. <sighs> that was a swerve I didn't expect. Although this still could lead to the six woman tag, I guess at WrestleMania the titles don't get defended. But well, I'm gonna say Trish was supposed to be there last, uh, on Monday, but right. creative change happened. Right. I mean, Becky and Lita as the tag team champions. And if that's the case, how does Trish fit in all of this? Probably barely beating them down afterwards, and then you set up the impromptu six woman tag there just for the haven, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. And again, these tag titles, again, doesn't matter. They still don't have like a real place among the WWE ecosystem. Charlotte Fair was very rapidly. We've already uh, talked about. We talked about uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody. Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy have apparently called out the winner of that watch of a match, which I guess is still going to be at this point uh, Bobby Lashley. And I think that about covers everything as far as what this WrestleMania could be. Unless I forgot a name. Yeah. Uh, let's see. No? I think yeah. we pretty much covered. Yeah. And so, I mean, overall, though, I will say this. It doesn't feel like a one-match WrestleMania. There's definitely a lot more depth to it that makes sense in storytelling and actual engagement investment. But I'm still going to be a little bit cautious because... As long as I know that one Vincent K. McMahon is somehow still underneath the WWE banner and Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar are still in the ecosystem, I just fear, fear that Vince McMahon still has a tiny drop of poison in this creative direction. That's all I'm saying. And that's, when, and that's what begs the question. Will Cody be able to finish the story because of what you just said? If what somehow... I mean? Yep. Some way, Vince puts in a creative input to have Roman not drop those titles to Cody. Do you understand the consequences, the road you are about to begin to lead on oh with gosh. all of these fans on social media who have wanted Cody since day one, been fantasizing, fantasizing booking since day one for Cody to be the guy to dethrone Roman? Who else you going to have it for? Jay Uso, did he throw him? And run it back with the guy that started it all in the first place. That was the first. I mean, Jay did line. take it to Instagram. 
I, I mean, Jay did take it to Instagram and said, bro, and he put the, but I'm just saying, people been saying Cody, but if Roman beats Cody, is Jay the guy? I see. That's what I'm saying. What you said about the whole Vince thing just now. Drop it, please. And I'm just saying, man. I, I, I'm, I'm walking cautiously, but I will say, as of right now, I am walking still a bit more comfortably than I was this time last year. If mm, that means year. anything. That's that, a that's an improvement from last year. Because last year was. Just, I mean, anything uh, better than freaking last year. Let's just be honest. Night one right. was good. I'll, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give night one. Night one was good, but night two was just a disaster. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it politely. Ay, ay, ay. Again, Vince McMahon. Her such good shit, pal. Shut up. But I digress. But yeah, that's what <laughs> everything going on in the uh, WWE. So. Hopefully this Friday we'll finally see where Jay Uso stands when it comes to well basically being alongside or against Sammy or against his own cousin. And could this crazy our booking? Could this even lead to and this is me just going way out there. Brother versus brother before WrestleMania. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boy, you crazy. I'm just saying, if Jimmy Uso freaking acknowledges his tribal chief and Jay Uso doesn't, but they are still brothers, what if the tribal chief forces the brothers to go against each other for a right to still be on the island of relevancy? If Jay Uso is exiled, does that mean Sola Sokoa takes Jay Uso's spot? I mean, around, around this time of two years ago, it was Jimmy who didn't want to acknowledge the tribal chief. Now it's the tables have turned, and it looks like Jay doesn't want to acknowledge his cousin, as we know just as of right now. See what I mean? I'm just saying that there, there is some merit to what I'm saying. I'm just saying. All right, you're but on to something, but like, that's going to be I'm, crazy I'm, if maybe that maybe does. Fully on to something, but even then, I might be fully correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that about covers the Jimmy ecosystem. Overall, I will say this. Elimination Chamber, for the first time in a long time, you actually mattered, at least for one match particularly, but you actually mattered yeah. in building into WrestleMania. So Triple H, definite plus, good on you, and thank God it wasn't in redacted. But I digress. All right. As we switch gears now to another company, let's go ahead and talk about do depend pro wrestling because they've had quite a February themselves. Kicking faints off, of Whoa. course, their tour, the new beginning, that definitely was one of the best new beginnings I have seen in years. Every champion brought it, every challenger brought it. I thought Toki was gonna work with the Toki Toki Kevin. I, I, I mean, King, he was that damn close. And say what you want about the Jets four guys' name, all four guys. Well, okay, three guys, but, you know, hype man Taka, he played his part, all right? And Taiji brought something out of Will Ospreay he needed since that loss back at Rusty Kingdom to Kenny Omega. But Taiji also brought a fight in his hometown that he needed to do. It was a proving ground for both men, and they brought out a hell of a physical fight, too. We have new six men, never overweight tag team champions, thank God. The House of Torture no longer has any gold. Praise the Lord. Minoru Suzuki, Ren W, and Elspro have come together, and they are called Strong Style. And we also saw Strong Style personified with the NW, wow, watch, NJPW World Television Championship defended by Zack Sabre Jr. against Tomoshi E. Please run it back, by the way. Please run it back. That was so damn good. And, of course, Shigo Takagi once again went around two with Kasuchika Okada, in the end, in Osaka, 100% Kasuchika Okada, might I add, who successfully retained the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And Leo Rush has also thrown the challenge out to Karomu. And we saw how close TMDK became to become the new tag team champions over Bishamon. Great, crazy physical uh, warfare. This uh, new beginning overall, King, I was very pleasantly surprised and engaged with. All the matches certainly delivered. And yo, he has finally come into his own. Such a level of renewed confidence taking on Hiromu. He was that damn close. 
Hmm. Since I didn't get a chance to watch it, let's segue into something I did watch, though. Ah, Battle I in see. the Valley. All right. There you go, folks. Again, we look at all things wrestling, but there's only so much time. <laughs> so please, if you will, bear with us. As I saw the new beginning, I will let this man right here give you all the takes on Battle in the Valley, which I have watched, too. But this forum is not about me. It's about ATW. Shout out, of course, the entire W family. I pray to my cash of flan. I say, I say, oh, all right, let, let me tell you something. The good guy is going to break away, damage control, and win <laughs> money in the bank and become the raw women's champion before the end of 2023. And, and I, I rest my case. That's for you, brother. And actually, I do believe that. We love you, brother. Yeah, we love you, man. Shout out to, of course, our queens, Cindy mm. G. Congrats on her. While you talk about the ballet, her, I would say, endeavor now in the journalism representing Panda Wrestling Company at the NJPW Battle Valley Press Conference. Congrats to you. Please follow her, folks, at Shiana's Chanel on TikTok and the Twitter and Twitch, especially. Help her grow her Twitch community to positive vibes all around. Our inquirer, Eric Brown, the producer man, James Keybert, that's definitely taken on a lot of things on his own, including you working with him on the old. Don DeMarco Show. Check that out, folks. at Joey Productions. The entire family. Party Man JD. Uh, the Wrestling Encyclopedia. Casey Gallagher. Our Enforcer, Alex. And, of course, our other queen, Megan Chiba, who's constantly doing her work in and out of wrestling across the pond. Cheers to you, my friend. We will try and do, folks, an ATW WrestleMania view. But I can't promise you anything because that would be false advertising. So just stay tuned. And again, for those I didn't mention, because the list is so long, uh, Kid Bandit, uh, Cat, uh, Mikey, uh, again, the family is forever and expanding. Shout out to Real Ooze mm. Indigo as well. Keep it real. Keep doing your content, bro. Again, ATW family, we are ATW for life. Now, that being said, my all lead NJPW Bullet Club Two Sweets mm -hmm. brother is now going to give <sighs> you the rundown, the thoughts, the in depth look and outlook on what was. NJPW's Battle in the Valley because for me, I know that they had the New Beginning Tour in Japan, duh, but Battle in the Valley for me was the new beginning for the America side of things when it comes to New Japan Pro Wrestling. King, the floor is yours. Bring it all down. Talk away. And if you want me to say anything, just let me know. How was Battle in the Valley in your take? Ah, oh, Battle in the Valley, in my taste, that took most of my Saturday because I was watching, of course, I had um, Illumination Chamber on the main screen when I had it screen mirrored with Battle in the Valley. So I was watching both, but New Japan Thanks. Pro Wrestling, Battle in the Valley had my main focus because that one had more star power that I was, you know, more looking forward to than Chamber itself. Right. Especially with Fred Rosser and Kenta for the strong open weight championship. Time to go to work. Mr. No Days Off. And, and I put on Twitter, Peter. I said, when it comes to Bullet Club, we attract gold. Him, Kenta and Rosser did not disappoint me to kick off Battle in the Valley as Kenta is your strong, your new strong open weight champion as he hit the GTS on Rosser. Wow. Good, good. So I I I to be honest, and as a bullet club truest and realist, I had Rossa retaining over Kenta. But well, I mean again, Kenta he's the second ever champion in the strong brand, being in the inaugural longest reigning champion, who I know you'll talk about later in that ridiculous filthy rose fight, Tom Lawler. And just to give you a little bit of because I did watch the whole thing. Couple of uh, pre show tidbits for you. The eight person tag looks like Rocky Romero might have a challenger and Bellotto Jr. for his title. And we're already picking yep. things up ahead of the Multiverse United during WrestleMania weekend, which, folks, I will be covering on the Deputy Giant Bludgeon versus Media. Stay tuned. Uh, with Josh Alexander and Kushida, because Kushida trapped Josh Alexander in the hoverboard lock and kept it on for an extended period of time after the match. It was Kevin Knight who got the win. And let's keep in mind, this Friday, Mark Spike Wrestling's second monthly special, No Surrender, where Josh Alexander is defending that gold against Rich Swan. And also, Bobby Fish, what a game! Also went one on one with David Finley. David Finley getting the win, but that was not the biggest thing David Finley did that night that I know you will go no, into. No, he did as I, not. As I, as I tune you back in now, that I caught you up. Continue. 
Yeah, yeah, that was like you said, that was not the biggest thing that David Finley did that night. But I'll talk more about that later. Um, then we had the strong uh, tag team championship between the West Coast Wrecking Crew and the Motor City Machine Guns, which I can never get tired of that theme song. Motor City. That I can never right. get tired of that. Damn right. But Alex Shelley and Chris Saban never failed to amaze me. It continued to prove why they are the one of the best tag teams in this of all of all, I'm, I'm, you know what? Screw it. One of the best tag teams of all time. Yep, yeah, there. You're not I wrong. Said it. You're not wrong. MCM MCMG retains, and what I it gets, um, Royce Isaacs and Jordan L, Jordan Nelson of Team Felt, the rest called the Wrecking Crew. Love them, respect both of them. But when you go up against the Motor City Machine Guns, you best better be be on your A game. You best not miss, and you best be on perfect, 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 with no mistakes. Because Chris Saban and Alex Schiller, they know how to do that to a T. But they retain the strong tag team championships here. They'll double and who, I, uh, who do I want to see go after them titles next? But that's this discussion for a different day at a different time. Well, uh, considering what's happening on Friday with them and Kushida against Ace, Austin, and Chris Bay, and one Kenta. Continue. <clears throat> Uh, speaking about Bullet Club, I might as well get this elephant out the freaking room. I actually, there's a reason why I didn't talk about one particular match from New Beginning, because I knew you were going to talk about Bound in the Valley, and even if you didn't watch it, you know what happened in Japan, too. So you might have uh, So... Go ahead, man. Just, just say it. Uh, he, he put his heart <laughs> out there. All right, got it. Uh, I can't believe on what I'm about to say. Just it, do it hurts my heart. Just do it. But this man, the man who sold out Madison Square Garden, the man who I think was one of the faces who carried New Japan on his back from when he got in introduced as the newest leader of Bullet Club is when I felt like Jay White's evolution skyrocketed. Because when he was in chaos, he just made an impact from as a young lion then get it into chaos with Okada. Yep. Then his evolution took a skyrocket when he became the new leader of Bullet Club. And we've seen this man take leaps and bounds and has became a main event player in New Japan. And that man poured his heart out against A.D. Kingston because the, this was a loser leaves New Japan. Basically, with A.D. Kingston stipulation, if Jay White was to beat A.D. Kingston, A.D. Kingston can no longer wrestle New Japan, in New Japan nor New Japan talent. In Jay White's case, if A.D. Kingston was to beat Jay White, Jay White leaves New Japan altogether, folks. And Jay White brought his best, but in the end, King's Road, A.D. Kingston, with that King's Road style, got Jay White for the one, the two, and the three that left the whole crowd of San Jose stunned with no words. And as one true Bullet Club fan as I am, I'm not going to lie to you, folks. I didn't have anything to say. I just left one. I just left one tweet, and that one tweet, and I'm going to say this now. Thank you, King Switch. Thank you, Jay White, for giving us the best matches of your career in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm. Thank you for your contributions of what you have done for not only in Bullet Club, but also in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Thank you, and we cannot wait to see where your career takes off next. I just want to learn. Oh, side note. Side note before I and I'll let you continue. I'll let go you ahead. go. Don't go to the E. I don't want you to I don't want them to rename you uh J Blade or something. Don't 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 J do Blade. Damn. You're giving some you know, you're, you're giving some Michael's ideas. You realize this, right? 
no, 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 I am not. I'm not giving that man ideas. You, he knows where he needs to, you know, and plus, Gato was rocking his stuff. So where does that tell you? And plus, even Jay White, even Gato said, wherever Jay White goes, Gato goes. So you would really think Gato going to go over there too? Absolutely not. So that's why I have a feeling. And plus, he's got a story right there in AEW from last year. He's got a whole story arc waiting on him. The whole Jay Cole, the whole Jay White and Adam Cole interaction. That little yep. tease when Okada came in. There's a whole story waiting on him there. So before you continue, I am going to say this. You don't have to agree with the way he gone about where some people are like, he denied a finisher. He took out the crown. He did this. He did that. But everything he did was with heart, was with thinking, was with New Japan Pro Wrestling in mind that got the attention. Everything that he said he was going to do came to fruition one way or another. And it was a domino effect that expanded globally beyond that, putting Bullet Club in every major wrestling company on the planet. Period. Point blank. I also want to endorse the fact that his last match actually in Japan was against Kaleo, where the big man mm-hmm. planted Switchblade Jay White in the middle of that ring as Switchblade Jay White told us to breathe and thanked the fans, what truly was his New Japan pro wrestling family. Congratulations, by the way, Hikaleo. And the reason I didn't bring that up is because I figured that you were going to at least highlight that because you knew what this was coming off of, too. Not just in Strong or what Eddie Kingston and yep. decided to do on Brian Alvarez's Dog on Podcast, too. And now we return to the registration program where I simply say this. Jay White, no matter what, thank you. The first ever Grand Slam, true Grand Slam champion of New Japan. I don't think anybody will be able to duplicate what was that man, let alone what that man did. But somebody definitely took us into a whole... And then David camp. Finley has to come in here and say, really? Like, you built on, you built New Japan and then this is how you go out? He took him out with the shillelagh before Switchway J. White got a chance to breathe. God. Continue. And then it, and then it got me, and it got me, like, and then it's like, okay, do I... Just, no, I was like, no. David Finley, the new leader of Bullet Club. No, it's just basically David Finley going out on his own. And it's like ever since he breathed with the switchblade, it's like it's taking that, it's taking its influence on him somehow. And yeah, now a, a he's rebel now against become everything that, and everybody continue. <laughs> exactly. He is now becoming that rebel. And now he is out to make it his 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 own era in his re- rebellious way. And now, now that Jay White has now Exit stage left. But I mean, as we move yeah. on from, as uh, we move you, on from you, that, do you, any, do you have anything else to say based on David Finley's like uh, rebuttal? Because talk about making a statement, but talk about wrong place, wrong time. In, in my in my opinion, it was it was really wrong place, wrong timing. Like I get End that of an you era, want to make but a, geez. like you wanted to basically. Not let the not let the fans of San Jose just take it all in and just basically realize of what's happening. You just really want to just, you know, oh no, no, so we don't. I'm not going to have no sympathy for Jay White. No, that's not no. Yeah. I have history with this man. You think I'm gonna let y'all have sympathy? No, that's not happening. Okay, screw all of you. Screw California. At the end of the day, you have to get my permission to be in this ring. Otherwise, don't be anywhere near it, or I will take you out. Okay, damn. Uh, F you, David Finley. See what happens from here. Right. But again, Switchblade Jay White, thank you. And wherever you go, everybody will always breathe in your era. But I digress. I heard, I heard that. Um, uh, All right, so, so <laughs> we'll continue on now. So we're moving, a, we're moving on to the uh, filthy... filthy fight. Rules match, filthy rules what match with Tony Lawler and uh, Homicide with uh, no ropes. It, it's just basic. And then Tom Lawler black, busting up the black denim jeans. He usually rocks blue, but he rocked in black denim. That black denim some, that sounds for, weird in general. I'm just going to say that for the record. <laughs> with, his, his, with the with the helmet gear and the, the with the gloves. And I'm like, are we, is this a mixed martial arts fight or... 
this is basically mixed martial arts mixed with wrestling with street fight because we did see a door get used somehow in some way and why are there doors just... and why are there doors and impact wrestling at jpw anyway continue <laughs> But this was a very chaotic and very violent match between those two. And Tom Lawler, once, once, yeah, once again, points. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and he had another pair of denim, even skinnier denim uh, underneath that. And uh, we saw a fort. We saw a door. We saw the exposed turbuckle post shoes. We saw chairs thrown in the men's faces. We saw a Benoit spot. Yes, I said that. From the top of a ladder, yeah, courtesy did. of Tom Lawler, I finally concussed himself. But that's how hostile and personal that this feud got between Homicide and filthy Tom Lawler. And in the end, the nasty knee to the brain finally put the man down in a sleeper, but still an infallible, screw you, dude. I'm still better than Jeez. you. I mm. would never be through with you. Tom Lawler does get the win. Filthy. And in the end, filthy probably being the most generous term Generous. It was a monkey butt ugly fight. Agreed, hundred percent. Damn. Just and damn. then we mo- then we moved on to now this was I'm just one of say our this right now before you say anything else. This was match of the nine, match of the weekend for me. Go ahead. As we move on to two our co main event, well one of our two main events. This was everybody's match that they've been looking forward to the most for the IWGP. Women's championship, and I'm a and I'm gonna agree with Noah on this one. Match of the night, match of the weekend. Mer- with between Kyrie, your second, well, your first ever IWGP Women's Champion, challenging the CEO, formerly known as the Boss, but has now evolved herself into a CEO, stepping into the ring for the first time. Within nine months, which, by the way, if y'all have not checked out the documentary, I suggest you go ahead and check out Mercedes Monet's documentary. Training in America, Mexico, Japan, all this time for this moment, truly what was the dream for her her entire life. Continue. And uh, and you can tell when she when her that opening note of her theme played, you can and when all the dancers came out. Man. You could tell it it was a big fight feel until so they cut to the second part of her song, and then she came out with who I think people still need to learn to stop cyberbullying people because this is what happens when we lose one of the one of the youngest and who I think have the most potential within stardom's history. But it, you people was different. want to continue mm-hmm. you people wanted to continue to cyber bully this young woman, 22 years old, to a fact to where in which yes, I did see the final days. My friend Kevin, shout out to you, Kevin, for sending me the link of the final days of Hana Kimura. I did go in with the right mindset. And let's just say it was gruesome to watch, but I'm but he suggested that I watched it with my own risk and I did. So um it is on YouTube. If you do want to watch the final days of Hana Kimura, here is my warning. Watch at your own risk. But back to what I was getting ready to say. Everyone is different. Everyone is good. Yes, sir. Continue. <clears throat> this is basically we need to learn how to stop cyberbullying because or else Hanukkah, this we could lead into another Hanukkah and we do not need that in this world. Cyberbullying is a no-no. Cyberbullying must be stopped. What I mean by that is that Mercedes came out with the Hanukkah gear, the whole nine, and I cannot lie to you. It had a tear in my eye because... And even Kevin DM'd me, DM'd me on Twitter and said, bro, I had a dream last night. And I said, what dream did you have, dude? I had a dream about Hana. And I said, you did? And I said, yeah. And Kevin said, I had a dream of Hana and Mercedes were squaring off. And I said, dude, you know, that would have been like highest rated of all time, right? And he said, yeah. And then Kevin gave her, as a fan in his dream, 
gave her a hug and didn't let go. And now I ain't gonna lie, that got me. But back to back, but back to this. Sorry, sorry, something. Kyrie, Mur- something in my eye. Continue. <laughs> but, but Kyrie and Mercedes. When you talk about women's wrestling, yeah, it does get talked about, but I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough in the pro wrestling landscape because Still people will always find a way. Underappreciate and people. Underbook. People will find a way to basically grift and pimp and pick point of basically, oh, this one, this did this didn't do it right, or that one didn't do such and such, and that one didn't do so and so. Go watch Kyrie and Mercedes. Because they gave y'all a minute classic. Exactly. This woman, and I'm talking about Mercedes. This was basically the big stage for her because she has not touched a ring in nine months since the walkout. You guys remember the walkout oh, of what man. happened that night on Monday night. This woman was out to prove herself that she can live out her international dream. And she did that with that new finishing move. I don't know what they call it. The playmaker. The playmaker. Oh, I like that. That is the most, boy, did she improve that. They both must have communicated well and went through that move several times to get it down right because that was so effective. Gory I love how it was executed. Position knee strike, and then the one, two, three. I, and to be honest, I kind of had Kyrie retaining, but I felt like this was Mercedes' moment. And lo and behold, your second IWGP Women's Champion, the CEO Mercedes Monet. But now, for what I've been told. AZM is now wanting that challenge of Mercedes, and so is um Mi- Miyu, what's, what's the Miyu Yamashita. Miyu, yep, and Mina herself. Mina Sakawa of Club Venus. <laughs> so, um, and plus, um, I don't want to spoil nothing, but uh. I did see a date on Spectrum from what I was personally DM'd. And y'all get an early spoiler from me. Bang. Don't say to anybody Two, else. One spoiler alert. Bang. You've been warned. <laughs> June 24th, 2023. AEW Forbidden Door, as I saw on the listing. Now, the place I heard. It's not going to be in the U.S. It's what I've been told. (laughs) Forbidden Door 2, Tokyo Dome. It's from what I've been told. That Tokyo Dome's going to use this year, I'll tell you that much. (laughs) And for what I've also been told, and I don't know if this other part is true, Mercedes Monet will be at the Tokyo Dome for that show. So who that whoever's been doing that Jamie Hader and Mercedes Monet agenda, think you're on the right track. Never say never, especially in the wrestling industry. Never say never. Yeah, I, I gotta say this match was the, the emotions were there before the bell even rang. The crowd was on the edge of their seat, paying so much attention. It was Mercedes Monet and JPW in ring debut. More so than anything else. Even Bailey, San Jose's own, was there supporting her friend. And at one point after we saw how much Mercedes focused on making sure the cutlass and the insane elbow would be rendered useless. And most of that was to her advantage. And again, we saw how much the Japanese and the Lucha background came into play as well with the uh, deep arm drag takeovers. And she is still a boss, so she still has that sass and attitude. Good lord, and the look too. And at one point, <laughs> she even did the Bailey to Bailey. To Belly. Nearly got the three there. She did the top rope meteora. Nearly got the three there. It looked like she was about to lose herself. The strong style that these two women shared in the middle of the ring at one point, where they're both literally set up back to back to each other. And then the impromptu spinning cutlass, but she stopped the insane elbow getting the legs up. And then another cutlass that dropped the ref for her. He stood, but it was not intentional, not intentional. And all hell broke loose. 
We go out to the freaking stage and she pulls out a table, but she ends up suffering through the table, courtesy of a freaking power bomb by Kyrie. That was insane. Finally brought her back in the ring, looking to finish phase, but every time they countered each other, whether it was cross phase or the bank statement, which I still think that's what it's called as far as that submission move goes, somehow, someway, both these women were able to fight back. And at one point, the anchor was in and she was literally bending her with a cross phase in half. It looked like she was about to tap, but she didn't. And when she stopped the insane elbow for the second time, and then it was just a test of strength, the backslide for backslide, both getting up, and somehow she was able to counter Kyrie's body weight into the gory, take over flat that position, that knee strike. The playmaker made the boss get a promotion. Just goes to show him when you're a boss, you still cannot reach your peak. And yes, Mercedes Monet and Kyrie both make history. Kyrie being the first, but Mercedes Monet. First defense of the IWGP Women's Championship in the U.S. is our new IWGP Women's Champion, endorsed by Kyrie herself with the belt around her, tears with both, and embrace. I couldn't ask for a more brighter new beginning for what's going to be an absolutely incredible, world-renowned women's division, I feel, to come on, in and out of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Congrats to the belt, but congratulations to Mercedes Monet as Bailey also was there live watching on off the side and left as Mercedes and Kyrie made their way out of the building too. But what a moment, what a match, what a beginning for this women's division. And assuming the current high-speed champion, while going a little sub here because stardom did kick them up off, Julia was able to successfully retain the title against a longtime friend and rival, Susan Suzuki, incredible match with the red belt. Saya Kamatani is the white belt, simple as freaking that as she was able to beat the former longest reigning multiple defender of that title single run, Momotabe, Black Peach, my dark desire. And that was a freaking hell of a clash. Himeka, the Jumbo Princess, she might be on her retirement, but her and my god DDM came this close to becoming the new gods of stardom tag team champions. Oedo ties uh, Saki Kamatani, or uh, probably I screwed up the name. She wants to go after the high speed title. And it also has been announced that Asume will defend the high-speed championship against her ultimate rival, Starlight Kid, of Rayla Tai, as the Cinderella tournament nears. And we'll see if Arai can once again win the glass slipper and get the promise by midnight, preferably saying. So that's just some stuff going on in a Stardom to get you guys uh, caught up there. And again, I would not count out Stardom talent changing away to a degree to be part of the women's division in New Japan Pro Wrestling because you need to now build the depth. You got your CEO, but who are the employees? I'm just saying. But yes, incredible win by Mercedes Monet. I also cannot wait for Hasuki, the wild heart, to take on Sarah Kamatani now for the white belt in what I believe is going to be now her 15th defense. Congratulations to the Golden Phoenix. Keep on shining. You are truly the wonder of stardom. And now I return back to King, who will probably have some rebuttal based on what I just said before he talks about the main event. I I have no rebuttal. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit. Of, I have no rebuttal. So you pretty much said that all points. You know, I'll, I'll catch Stardom whenever I get a chance. You know, it's too much wrestling for me. But you you yeah. watch all things wrestling. So you you more in educated on Stardom than me. So I, I create ATW <laughs> based on that principle. But yes, I am. I guess I'm the CEO of ATW because I do watch all things wrestling. <laughs> but. Anyway, as uh, uh, as I will let Noah do the play by play on this main event, which I'm just going to simply just say this about this main event: Okada and Tanahashi before 2023 have not met for an IWGP Heavyweight Championship since 2018. Right here we are. Here we are, five years later, and two of what I think two of the best. Two of the greatest that have ever stepped foot in a New Japan ring that basically, if you was to do Mount Rushmore, you better have Okada Tanahashi, but they gave you why no matter how old these two get, especially with Tanahashi's age and how his knees are just wearing him down in his career. Somehow, some way, I feel like those knees, those legs, he, he feels no pain. When it comes to putting high, like five star matches with Okada, uh, any type of big match, really, because like, yeah, his knees have made and his legs might get worn down, 
But when he does them high fly flows, it doesn't show it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> At he, all. He screams and he screams in the moment is what that comes down to, in my opinion. Anyway, but but Rainmaker once again puts down Tanahashi. And um one, two, three, Okada is still your um IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. What I thought was a great main event, but then Mercedes? Coming in, I mean, and I'm like Mercedes, bro. And then that shot, you realize what you're looking but, at when it comes to New Japan ushering in the next year, in and out of Japan but, and in America. You but, realize what you saw. But, 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 but I noticed what I saw before that even happened. Okada wanted to get the Dream Team back together. He wanted him and uh, him and uh, Tanahashi to go after the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship before, before Mercedes came in. And then, as now, Noah is sharing this excellence, greatness, personified right here, folks. This, just like he alluded to, we are now ushering in a new beginning here in the States of New Japan Pro Wrestling and a New Japan Pro Wrestling in general. This is the new beginning. And Okada, I don't know you can dance, dude, just for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and people say Okada doesn't have character. <laughs> but I'm alluded to uh, Noah with a play-by-play on this main event. So, I mean, again, it's Okada Tanahashi. It's an immortal Wrestle Kingdom robbery that spanned across three gum years. And it was the first time in history the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship was defended on U.S. soil with these two incredible pillars of New Japan Pro Wrestling that still bring their best today. There's a reason why Tanahashi's freaking Titantron says Iron Will, but why he still is the superstar, the wrestler, the man that is once in a century. You, of course, have the early tie up there, and then we have DDT on the entrance way, trying to take control, and then Tanahashi fights back with some ridiculous German suplexes because the Dragon Screw but I still say it to this day. Damn, that move has to suck! <laughs> Going for both Tanahashi hits the high fly flow, but then the champion would come back eventually with a slapjack, stop with a sling blade by uh, the ace, and fury of offense, strong style personified by these two in the early going of this match continued. At one point, the most effective difference maker, and I yelled at one point during our open mic night, sorry crew, Kick <laughs> dropped the ace where he stood, the best drop kick in the entire wrestling industry. There, I said it. Another Dragon Screw again, though, definitely put things into order. And then the money clip. The, the first time, I believe, Tanahashi has ever dealt with the money clip, the uh, cam camel clutch. But he mm -hmm. was able to get out of that and then come back with a straight jacket German suplex led to a two and a half. And then next thing you know, pair of knees to the uh, sternum. Ouch. That definitely knocks the win mm -hmm. out of you. Some forearm shivers, elbow strikes. And at one point, Tanahashi goes for both, gets drop kicked out of midair on the damn high five. Low. And then we got a Rainmaker that was countered with an inside cradle because Tanahashi's woman stuff is simple as a victory roll. Still not enough. At one point, Okada shut down Tanahashi. Still not enough. Cobra Flosion finally came into play, followed by Red Mega for the defender three count. In the end, Okada once again proves why he is New Japan. And he made it rain in San Jose and apparently did a little bit of a number with Frankie Monet. <laughs> the CEO and the Rainmaker, your faces of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I see nothing but profits, ah, dollar signs, and brighter times. I got here. it. Something just struck me. I got this. Hear me out. <laughs> Okada and Monet versus Omega and Riho. There we go. If you want to do a mixed tag, let's do Boy, are you crazy? Oh, well, I mean, Tokyo Dome for Benidorm. I mean, uh, maybe you're not crazy. Uh, But yeah, and that was uh, Battle of the Valley for the first pay-per-view of the New Japan of America uh, brand uh, this year. Hell of a kickoff, to say the least. A lot of stuff really surprised us. History was made, and the sky's the limit where New Japan Pro Wrestling goes from here. Wait a minute. There's one match we've got to talk about. Zack Sabre Jr. and Clark Connors for the NJ NJBW World Television title. Oh, that's right. That was before the freaking uh, thing. That, that's right. I'm sorry, because that was after the uh, fight. And again, Zack Sabre Jr., uh, he is Takas, but he calls it the strong style tile for a reason. But Clark Connors, he fought his way through, even spearing the man at one point. But 
Clark Connors was able to try him out back some uh, offense. He followed up with the power. I think he got a little bit full of himself at times, and he forgot that the clock mm-hmm. is also your enemy. And at the end of the day, when Zach Seaman Jr. pulled it over and trapped that arm, that arm was literally going vertical and backwards about the pilot socket. You had no choice but to tap out. Great competitive bout, though. Again, Zach Seaman Jr. is tested by his opponent towards the time limit, which I really enjoy. And as commentary alluded to, even if it went to a drop, Zach Seaman Jr. would retain. But Zach Seaman Jr. doesn't fight you to go to the 50-minute time limit just for a draw either. He fights to test himself. Nope. And once again, the front man of TMDK did just that, even though I have no idea what any of the words is for his fiend. Me neither. But also, after the match, one Kevin Knight decides decides to step up to the plate. Why not? And wants to test himself against Zack Sabre Jr. We which I'm that. looking – if that does get announced, I want to see – I want to see that happen. Yeah, me too, honestly. I mean, he asked the fans, oh, you're your dickhead spink. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. And I got to say, I love – despite what people call this title looking like. I love what this title has been presented as and their inaugural champion. Again, incredible stuff winning against Randall Rita to crown the first champion at Wrestle Kingdom. Incredible first defense against Tomoshi during the new beginning because Tomoshi E is always a man that brings strong style at its best. Mm-hmm. He's not facing a crapped out evil. Oh, sorry, I say that out loud. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Clark Connors now being the uh, next defense. Uh, tell me why I'm telling lies. Uh, I thought that Clark Connors, he brought a strong, mean fight, but also a bit of a technical side in too. So kudos to him. And why I do talk about, you know, tell me lies and technical. We talked about Kenta. There was a certain best in the world in attendance that night watching on from the Raptors. And Kenta's number one fan was acknowledged by the new strong overweight champion himself. I'm just saying. He still needs to mend fences first before we can go even further. Yes, he has a couple months left until his rehab process is complete. And for what I've been told from Melter, so take that with a lot of grain of salt as you will, that man is slated to internally be back on that roster. But him and the Bucks have still yet to mend fences. Oh, boy. Everyone needs to grow up and move on. Think about mm. what's best for the future of yourself like Dak and said, the company. I'm we need, saying. like Dak said, let's get along and let's do it for the business. If we can make money off it, because there's a money match laying right there. With there's multiple the money matches laying in this dynamic. Just put it out there, all right? But... Just saying. Uh, for the the both of them, all three, because I think Omega has not said a word. Omega has stayed out of it. Omega's been doing bit. Omega's been busy. I mean, I just right. recently watched his po- Oh, I just recently watched his podcast episode with Swerve and the rest of the crew. So um, he dropped a lot of information too about the video game, about a little Kota Bushi tease. He did. Um, which um, I still believe that's excited to behold, which it, uh, I'll give it by midsummer this year. We will see Cody Abushi in AEW. I'll give it summer this year. Summer. Slow take, considering we know that Cody Abushi is going to be involved in Josh Burnett's blood sport against freaking Speedball Mike Bailey. We are watching that shit and zooming during it. I don't care. We are watching that <laughs> shit and zooming during it. I don't care. Okay, I don't care what the rest of the card is. This is the one match that made me buy Bloodsport for the first time ever. There, I said it. Right, but uh, but, but yeah, yeah, but anyway, but Omega dropped saying. a lot of inf- mm-hmm. Omega dropped a lot of information, like I said, about the video game and why it got pushed back because they wanted to make it a teen rating. Um, but instead, because they, they were showing it was too much blood in the trailers and all that, so they were trying to fight that ESRB rating, you know, oh, system nonsense. and product. Yeah, trying to get so now they got that taken care of. Um, Good deal. Also, he also talked about he also talked about why the Joshi's got uh, are getting still continue to get disrespected, which he developed a very good take on that. Which y'all need to, people stop disrespecting the Joshi's, okay? That's that just stop. Grow up. Stop disrespecting the Joshi's. Joshi Joshi style wrestling. I hate to say it, but it's the best women's wrestling ever. <laughs> Now, next to Japanese strong style out of stardom, where some of them they started through Joshi, uh, 
Duh. I mean, the friggin' high speed fairy, not Sepoy, and Tem Nakano are the cutest tag team on the planet, and they're former guys to start on tag team champions and will have one of the most emotional personal rivalries last year in stardom where not Sepoy went turned against her own faction she was brought into to become part of Tem Nakano's faction for what she called a revolution. But I'm just yep. saying. And he, he also dropped them. Let me see what else he dropped. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Because there was a lot of rumors going around saying, that, oh, people in WWE believe that they can land Kenny Omega. Well, from that podcast episode, it don't look like he wants to go over there to me. Yeah, he's, he said he's developed a good friendship over there with the people over there in WWE. But it sounds like for me, from the words he said, I'm talking about mostly about AEW and New Japan. I think that's where I, um, that's where my, his focus is going to be between those two companies. And so if anything. <laughs> If anything that I can think of, he can probably just alternate schedules like he currently is doing. Go New Japan one week. I mean, this uh, this amount of dates. Come back to AEW, do this amount of dates. Right. You know, kind of AEW full-time, New Japan part-time. Basically what Mox do, is doing, Arch, Lance Archer is doing. Which, thank God, the Myrtle Hawk monster is back on time. Oh, on time. She's a beast. Continue. Now we just need to. Now we just need to get Miro back. But um, I digress. Which, You're not wrong. Um, which um, another pay per view cycle without the Redeemer. This doesn't. This is not right. This is not right at all. I'm just gonna say that this is not right at all. All right. The Redeemer <laughs> needs redeemed. He needs a resolution. It should somehow be G's a revolution. These are the words of the simple man that supports the Redeemer. But I digress. All right. <laughs> da, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't do acting. <laughs> Non-copyright. I don't do acting. All right. Well, before we talk about the uh, main event here, which will be, of course, uh, what we lightly uh, touched on as far as at least one man, even if we don't know the whole show, and I'm sure you didn't know the whole show, but if you even right. like, watch, like, how's the whole show? Of course, I did. And talk about Joshi Pro, a great a woman tag, great a woman Joshi Pro uh, tag team. I love that every match had a title theme with it, too. It's, again, KG Mudo wants to bring out what pro wrestling is, and that is love. And every one of these matches to a degree did that. But before we talk about that, we'll go ahead and talk about this right quick because per the March tradition, I know you're a sports person, man, and you're all about March Madness. There's also one other tradition that is also part of March at times that we've become accustomed of that sets us up towards Sakura Genesis. And we finally have our brackets. The New Japan Cup! So the New Japan Cup has a surprising uh, first times here, and you do see some previous winners here. I definitely look at the very top left, and I see a great exhibition because these two love to fight each other, Sonata and Taiji. We have Ozzy Open involved in this thing. We have Tetsuya Naito taking on El Fantasmo, and El Fantasmo, of course, proving to us why he is heavyweight. Incredible match against Tama Tonga for the IWGP never overweight championship. Fell short, though, but still a great bout. Tomatonga actually has a bye here where he could be facing Shigo Takagi or Aaron Hanare. He was in this, unfortunately. Uh, Jeff Cobb, the Imperial <laughs> King, will also be uh, involved in this. <laughs> and uh, Will Ospreay also gets uh, a bye. Great <laughs> Oh, hell. Uh, oh, hell. He will face winner David Finley and Tomashi East. Don't put both my boy. And you do see the rest of the field, too. And I wouldn't mind seeing Tommy Shee and Great Khan. All hail. Renew hostilities. And this will culminate come March 21st. And this thing kicks off March 5th. The day of AEW Revolution. So, King. Oh, uh, God. Eh, <laughs> no sleep. So, King. Uh, no sleep. The, eh, well, what is sleep? What is sleep? Uh. Based on this uh, bracket here, what are your uh, initial thoughts? Who you think is going to go to the disc? Who you think could surprise you? Who do you want to see win it? Do you want to see Ooh. a repeated winner or a first timer? Go ahead and give us well, some great from you. I already see one surprise name on this bracket, and that's Shoto Umino. Roughneck. That's the roughneck himself. Hell of a match with Tessa. That Nato, is a surprise. He, yeah, that he, is a yeah. that is Mox protege written all over that man. Yep. Um 
that is one name that has surprised that surprises me on this bracket. Everybody else is, you know, big time, big game changers for in this in this bracket in this whole tournament. Um, let me see here. Sonata Taiji can't deny tell if I tell my Oh, I see. Uh, like you touched on, I see some repeated winners here. Yep. But and it looks like I might have to stick with that repeated winner aspect. Um, let's see. Keep in mind, dude, whoever wins this faces Kasuchika Okada at Sakura Genesis. Hmm. See, you see, good thing you do. Ah, oh, man. Let's see, Takagi already had his shot, so yeah, Takagi yeah. out. Um, Will Ospreay. Let me see. Will Ospreay got his shot? Yes, yes. He's got a yep, buy also. I can't, I can't believe that dude brought it back at Wrestle Kingdom, but that's a different discussion for a different day. Uh, um, yeah, 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 agree. It'll be like the end year <laughs> fade, like the craziest star of the first, the craziest star of 2023 Pro Wrestling Year elevated at Wrestle Kingdom. Anyway, continue. Yeah, Yano Yano eliminated because I we both can't stand him, so he's out of that picture. Um, right, evil to get him out of here too. Yes, I don't yeah, like yeah. evil. You know my feelings about him. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna throw this name out there, and I'm all about taking risk when it comes to you know these type of things, like these type of brackets. Even though a bracketologist like myself that does the Owen, which stay tuned by the way, if they do do the Owen this year, I will bring back the Owen Heart Bracket Challenge. So stay tuned on that. Um, um, you know what, <laughs> Naito is my winner. I'm going to go with Naito. Naito, huh? Naito. I believe the Stardust himself. I feel like, yeah, he wants another run as champ. But I feel like, in my belief, yeah, this, like, because he's all about, he, he got his main event, so per se, with Muto out the way. Which we will talk about here shortly, yep. <clears throat> so, now I feel like it's championship aspirations for Naito at this rate. I would I would have said Tama, but Tama is too busy with the Never Open Way Championship last time I checked. Still the so... champ after an incredible defense against uh, ELP, although I wouldn't mind seeing Tama versus Aaron Harry or Singer Takage. So that's why I'm going with Naito, Naito, Naito and Okada. Naito is your New Japan Cup winner of 2023. That's who I got. You know I'm always going to hold out for those that haven't won it yet, but I want to see them ascend to that next echelon New Japan, and that's definitely Stone Pitbull, my boy, Tomoyoshi E, and Taiji, mm -hmm. for that matter. But I also think about this. One of the people that had the roughest year so far, kind of the roughest like couple of years, is Sonata. But Sonata actually had a yes. victory over the Rainmaker, nearly to a draw in the G1, and they never really followed up uh, on that after his Gear Pro Wrestling shot against Okada, and he lost. I feel Sonata right. really needs to prove a point here, and winning the New Japan Cup would help that. It also surprised me that Hiroshi Tanahashi is not even involved in this freaking thing. Uh, I guess he did just challenge him for the title, though. And honestly, maybe that was Tanahashi's like, last shot at the title for a while, and Maybe that's for the better because that does give uh, other people a chance here. We see Ozzy Opens involved in this thing. We could see uh, United Empire face each other if Mark Davis overcomes Yano's shenanigans and you get him versus the combo of Kingpin. A real test for that power athlete. Uh, just saying, Jeff Cobb, the Imperial Unit, I mean, he nearly won a G1 block. He's never won New Japan Cup, but I'm sure he wants the receipt against Kasuchika Okada. But I also know he still has the United States Championship in his vision. And with the Cow Palace coming up, I still can't help but think, will Jeff Cobb show up? And will this be a way you set up him versus Omega for the IGP United States Championship? Maybe even Ashkara Genesis, for all I know. I I'm just saying. Uh, Tomoyoshi E versus Great Khan. All hail. I really want to see that match, so I hope that becomes a thing. Roughneck versus the NJPW World Television Champion. Saxon Madrid, of course, a multiple-time former NJ Cup winner. He won the Cup last year, actually, if I yep. uh, remember correctly, and went in the hyper-attack yep, against correct. Okada. 
Tamatanga and Shigo Takagi has the biggest uh, aspirations for me because Shigo, of course, still has the KLPW championship, but Shigo is also a former never overweight champion. So if he's going to work his way back up, why not go back after the title that you held so predominantly long and strong for the longest time till it was botched by freaking the person we're not going to talk about. Ren Narita now six-man uh, champion, taking his chance to uh, strong style in the New Japan Cup. I think he could go the distance, but if I was to figure out the finals uh, for this thing, this is just me going really bold and out there and figuring about who the each man uh, has to go through. But I wouldn't mind seeing a final between Tomarkia Ishii and Sonata or Taiji. All three of those men have incredible mm -hmm. history with Katsushika Okada and also amongst each other. And none of those three men have won the New Japan Cup either. So I'm holding out for our first time winner, even though I know that Sia Naito, there's been talk about him maybe being freelancer soon and leaving New Japan or, you know, oh. his contract uh, coming up and why that might be a way to keep him in. I mean, no matter what, he's tranquilo. But, yeah, I, I just want to see a first-time winner. I feel Sonata needs it the most when I look at this uh, bracket. But, again, will Sonata fall short to the Rainmaker? Can he afford to do that, you know? Call himself New Japan's new hope. What hope are you if you can't even be the hope for yourself? You keep trying, but you're not succeeding. I'm just saying. So that's my uh, right. super thing of the New Japan Cup. So heartfully, I want to be Ishii on the right hand side, and on the left hand side, I want Sonata and or or Taiji, which obviously means one's going to be eliminated. But I think you are pretty much on point looking at this bracket that the strongest case to win this could be Tetsuya Naito. So I guess we're just going to have to uh, wait and see. But overall, I like this bracket. It looks pretty nice. A couple of names I would remove, but uh, I'm hopeful. All right. Well, that being said, we covered a lot. I also want to just bring up a short highlight to NWA's World Women's Champion that I got to meet, by the way. Thank you, Camille, for the autograph and the Camille. conversation. All the best in your uh, continued uh, success. Wonderful individual. Uh, she is still, of course, NWA World Women's Champion now for over 620-odd-plus days. And... Ooh. Good Lord, you're talking about a bitch that's unbeatable. That's one that's definitely going mm -hmm. And as a leaps and bounds above the AEW TBS champion. Sorry, not sorry. It's just a fact of life, not an insult. Uh, right, so let's go put that out there. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the biggest thing to come out of February, in my opinion. And that was not just the end of an era, but the finale of a legend. Giving us his love one last time in professional wrestling. And what I thought was an incredible promotional scoping pay-per-view extravaganza in the Tokyo Dome with the Pro Wrestling Noah set that gave me the greatest lighting sequences I've ever seen. That was incredible. The eight-woman Joshi Pro uh, tag match, Mia Yamashita kicked the face off freaking so and, and I love the fact that Yuka Sakasaki and Mik Mikey Ito, uh, yeah, they still don't like each other. <laughs> Yeah, but, they still uh, don't. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do, right? But Yuka Sagasaki, of course, she uh, got the win uh, for her team. Uh, good stuff. Again, respect on Joshi Pro. Uh, go check out uh, TJPW on uh, Wrestle Universe. Check out all these promotions on Wrestle Universe. We had uh, DDT Pro Showcase. We had Dragon Gate Showcase. We had All Japan Clash with Wrestling Noah's own uh, Kino and uh, Congo Unit Rebellion. And I got to admit, that All Japan guy. He could go. I like what he brought against Nakajima. I want to see those two go one on one. Put him in the freaking uh, end one. Uh, just saying. That it really will be showtime. Uh, we saw uh, Akasa. I, I know I'm gonna butcher names. Apologies, folks. We saw the uh, GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion clash with the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Hiromu. Very good competitive bout, but of course Hiromu got the win. Felt very personal going in, but I feel it was a lot of respect earned during it. And showcase in the end, you saw how distraught, of course, that man was in defeat. Coming close, but not uh, quite far enough. Pro Wrestling Noah has tag team uh, animosity inside themselves, but Pro Wrestling Noah did win their bout against, I think was uh, Dragon Gate. I can't remember the uh, whole card. Uh, apologies, uh, folks. We saw a breakdown with Taiji Ishimori and a mentor in what was a different form of a retirement match that I definitely was uh, super short. But kudos to uh, what they got out of it as Gato just looked on. Well, I think a tear in his eye, King, if you saw that correctly like me. Mm -hmm. And it was like, again, it was just uh, the ending uh, for, you know, more than uh, one man. And that six tag again with All Japan and Pearl Noah with uh, their Congo uh, Rebellion uh, group. 
That was something really awesome. But let's go ahead and talk about the two main events on this show because each one had their own personal, emotional showcase, to say the least, and was, I feel like, a finale of sorts in different cases. So let's go ahead and first talk about this because who would have thought you would ever see the Pro Wrestling Noah GHC champion face the IWGC the mm. IWGP one heavyweight champion that no showed the press conference shining through dream match. This was a lot shorter than I expected. Kaito Kiyomiya, of course, nine years younger than the icon of the wrestling industry, in my opinion, going today. Ren Mecca, Kasuchika Okada, who made pretty quick work, but he was out to prove a point at the expense of the pro wrestling Noah fan base. What did you say? The hillish side of Okada when I saw the highlights. Me like you. I want to see Okada go hill. I want to see that Okada. happen. And Anoki Dark Okada. Okada. Good grief. Yes, I, I want to see that happen. Full time. 100% full fledged. I want to see that. Because we've, we, we've been accustomed to, you know, this side of Okada for a long time. Yes. So it wouldn't hurt for a 100% full-fledged Anoki Ogata. I would not mind that one bit. Yeah, and th this match was pretty short for what it was worth, but Kato Kiyomiya, he definitely showed a lot of fighting spirit and heart, but I think he got a little bit full of himself at times. In the early going, Okada basically threw him out of the ring, played him off like, meh. And then he came back in, trying to fight back. At one point, got caught with a ridiculous over back by drop, and then DDT on the floor. But then Kata Kiyomiya, he got his own payback. Deadlift German suplex from the inside of the elevated ring uh, ringside area to the lower level concrete area to Kasuchika Okada. And then his own run-up move, but instead of doing a crossbody, he did a tope con hello, got some distance. Mm -hmm. Brought the man back in the ring and eventually hit a course. His idol, Keiji Muto's move, the Shining Wizard, nearly got the three. He actually hit the Shining Wizard a couple of times here. A key point was when he blocked the Rainmaker with a jumping knee strike, hitting the arm, not Okada, directly in the face, trying to render the Rainmaker useless in a case. At one point, though, Okada, he was having uh, none of it, and in the end, Finding Spirit was snuffed out out of uh, Kaito uh, Kiyomiya after the drop kick and the Cobra Flosion finally hits not just the discus rainmaker but the may rainmaker one two picks the man's head up and another rainmaker and immediately just walks away kazuchika okada has defeated pro wrestling's noah's top guy the ghc heavyweight champion the iwgp heavyweight champion was victorious in the tokyo dome on a pro wrestling noah stage yep <laughs> <laughs> well, Kaito Kiyomiya, you may be 10 years younger. You called your shot, but you are no Rainmaker. But I admire the fight you brought. That's really all I got to say about yep. that. What was your thoughts with the fact that we actually saw, got to see this, uh, man? It, it's crazy, to say the least. And we all know there is a certain separation when it comes to communities and wrestlers, especially when it comes to Pride, yeah. across different yep. companies, particularly in Japan. Pro Wrestling Noah and NJPW, of course, NJPW, 50 years plus of history, Pro Wrestling Noah doesn't even have that. But, yeah, and it's almost like Pro Wrestling Noah's kind of been in the shadows of NJPW. It was almost like Kazuki Mia was out to prove a point. Don't overlook me. I am Noah. And Kazuki Mia proved that quite to a degree. It was a good fight, though. It was a good match for what it was worth. Very good match. And like you just touched on, Noah has been in that shadow consistently of New Japan. And he was out to prove a point. But in the end, it's Okada. Okada right. will do whatever it takes to win. Right. So. <laughs> Made it personal with the Noah fans, I'm sure. But uh, at the end of the day, Kaito, you got what you wanted. I hope it was worth it. If nothing else, it was a learning experience. But speaking of experience, from the history to the symbolism to the title of it in itself, to a match 11 years. I would not say in the making, but maybe in waiting. It was more waiting for the former Stardust genius, now the Ingerbal one, or the actual wrestling genius. King, talk about not just what you saw in the highlight package, not just what you saw in the over-theatrical 
history, hierarchy, lighting, musically guided entrance. But just the fact that, again, as far as this goes, this was the last match of Keiji Muto. Keiji Muto was part of that Anokianism mm -hmm. with Chono and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. I've watched and seen this man when he was in WCW. When he was part of the NWO at the time, 97. Then I got that's how I got introduced to the great Muda. I didn't know it was Keiji Muda back then as, as a child. I didn't know that. <laughs> until until I've grown up, like, you know, grew up at like until I got older with an age, and I thought, like, oh, that's that's Keiji Muda. Like, oh. It all, but, it all works together now. <laughs> right, exactly. So, mm. like, his style is just amazing, especially his match with Sting and you know, him being part of New Japan, like, uh, NWO Japan with, uh, around with Paul and Nash oh, Hogan around that time. Yep. So, I, but his match with Sting will always go down as one of my favorites to watch. Like, I'll still go back. If I want to just watch wrestling for just about a few hours and just with, like, no gaming needed, I'll go back and I'll watch a great mood of Sting or I'll go watch some classic, like, WCCW. Or go I'll watch, watch Tanahashi like, versus KG Mudo at the freaking Tokyo it, Dome. I watch that, too. So, <laughs> All right, very, very good. Uh, as long as we're on the same page, continue. So, but the great the, uh, KG Mudo's influence, you can tell it has – influenced especially Naito and I remember that Naito has been wanting like uh, Keiji Muto especially with that uh Wrestle Kingdom six man tag and when Muto was trying to do a freaking top rope how dare you old man don't uh uh Tanahashi was trying he to tried, save he your tried, butt he, on that one. he tried it twice during <laughs> this match too dear god he did oh, oh. continue <laughs> Oh God! But oh, um, Lord. Naito, it was out like like you touched on. I feel like we're about to experience the last like the freelancing side of Tetsuya Naito with his contract expiring with New Japan. Him about the freelance, he's been wanting this match, and he's also been having the Wrestle Kingdom of one to two main event another Wrestle Kingdom on his mind. But Mudo has been on his mind first. He got that. This match was well worth it to see. So if y'all haven't seen it, go out of your time and watch it. It was basically, I loved it. Loved this match. And Naito got what he wanted. Yeah. And now we can put that to rest. But until Chono decided to come out of nowhere and there's like, oh, we got a secret main event for you. I'm like, huh? Secret? Oh, God, I love Freaking! Oh my god! So it's like, oh, I got my main event with Naito. I got my main event with uh Muto. Says Naito. No, you thought you did. Chono was the one who got his main event with Muto. One of his most infamous <laughs> rivals in his entire yep. career. Fifty nine <laughs> years of age. Muto sixty years of age, and both men have probably been in the business for forty years. And it was ref by an in suit, Tiger Hattori. Yep. <laughs> oh, I was tearing up and I was laughing so damn hard. Oh my god! Uh, but uh, that was that was and Chono got Muto to submit. Yep. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh but oh my gosh! No one their history and their robbery, which I have seen some of their matches. I'm not. I'm not. So I'm. I'm okay with the outcome. But Musketeers, that was man. the. Musketeers. That was the last love. That was the the last chapter, and that was the last we see of Keiji Muto, great Muda, in a wrestling ring. Period. And Pro Nola, AJPW, WCW, Impact, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Great Muda, Keiji Muto. You figure about the names of the industry right now that we saw, not just Japan, but have been influenced by this man and his 40 plus year uh, legacy, 39 years, excuse me, legacy today. Been in the rings of the likes, like you said, Antonio Inoki, Big Vader, just to put out a name out there for those that may know. 
And the fact that there was symbolism with Tetsuya Naito, who wanted to be the genius himself, was the stardust genius, but then was grounded by the genius, became ungovernable, and has been waiting, seething, boiling over to this day internally for a man that is so emotional but doesn't clearly show it. Dude, you saw his jacket. It said, gracias y adios. Now, how many know <laughs> Espanol, but even I knew what that said. Thank you and goodbye. We already saw the last matches of freaking Great Muda last year at the crossover show in NJPW. And earlier this year, like you alluded to, alongside Sting, another great rival from history, and you young boy, <laughs> Darby Allen in a six-man tap for wrestling. No, no, you help me, you young boy. This freaking that chair is freaking hilarious. And then we just get the iconic music, that entrance, that that spirit that only KG Mudo personifies. All the shiny wizards possible, grounding Tetsuya Naito with a uh, knee hold uh, cross face. It was a true Keiji Mudo bout, a perfect way to end his luscious career. Shigeru Takagi, freaking Hiromu Takahashi, and freaking Sanada, who does the freaking Mudo stuff for a living, by the way, in a full suit. That just shows you how much of a special occasion it was for him. We're also at ringside in the government once corner, while most of the progressing Noah in roster, including. Uh, Mera Fuji was, of course, in Keiji Muto's corner. Keiji Muto, who breathed new life into this company in the last year and a half alone. Why we have the likes of Kaito Kiyomiya, who literally was underneath his learning tree, coming into his home and taking the GHC Heavyweight Championship from the very man himself. There was a nice lockup. Of course, we got a traditional tranquilo pose during uh, one point. Then we got a nice drop kick on the ramp. Running drop kick, by the way. That was one of the longest damn ramps of oh, uh, Tokyo Dome. So again, that that uh. Makes yep, sense. it is. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> Figure four leg lock by the uh, genius himself that earned him his uh incredible uh Tokyo Dome uh victory 28 years ago, and also a submission shout out to well Tanahashi. Yeah, Tanahashi, who was emotional and also on commentary. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember us at the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, don't you, freaking ace? I'm just saying. Uh, we got DDT, Masawa, Emerald Flosion for a uh, near two. Shinya Hashimoto-esque overhand rights were exchanged by uh, Keiji uh, Mudo after uh, Naito locked in a uh, full leg Nelson. And, of course, uh, Keiji Mudo has, like, the, the, the most damaged legs possible in the industry. Yes, he did go for the freaking Mudo Moonsault, but twice. But thank Christ, both times. He came down, didn't do it. Hit the Shining Wizard and then sent Nano up for a uh, freaking stand up and instead got drilled with Esperanza and then goes for the Destino but gets caught again for a leg lock. At this point, Naito, he is busted over, I believe, his uh, right eye. And Muto was this close to uh, winning after a crushing Shining Wizard to the back of the head. Still wasn't enough. Another Shining Wizard still was not enough. I thought that he was going to win his retirement. But nope, it was not meant to be completely bloody. Naito hits two shiny wizards of his own, but did not put down the genius for a three. It was old faithful in the end, holding his fist in the air and giving a love pose. Destino. And it was over for Keiji Muto. Until he wanted to do one last little fun thing for not only his fans, friends, his love of the injury himself, but one of the greatest people to follow him the entire way as Mudo gets a Kenta kick and an STF and taps out with Tiger Hattori calling for it. We get an emotional uh, speech and then Muto takes his final bow, makes his way up the entranceway. Fantastic firework explosion. The send off for the genius himself of near 40 years in the industry. As the music kept playing, and I'm still rewatching that too, uh, as we uh, speak, folks. And that was it as the lights go down, and this was shown. All right, Gato, KG Mudo. Hmm. It's still surreal to me, King. It's still surreal. It is too. And you do it see that too. graphic. You were talking about the. You were talking about the the pioneers of the industry. You see who's on that graphic with him. Oh. Yep. What a roller coaster. What a ride. What a career. What a last love for an absolute legend for generations of the industry. 
Thank you, Keiji Mudo. Arigato. And that being said, folks, that is your simple ATW view impromptu highlight reel for the month of February 2. Catching you up on AEW, NJPW, WWE, and Pro Wrestling Noah for that matter. And of course, giving our last farewells, send offs, and absolute thankfulness to the legend, the genius, Keiji Muto. There never will be another. I hope you all enjoyed this quick little session. And again, we will be back next week, Friday, following the countdown to AEW Revolution with the strictly returned. Where it began in 2020, it comes back once again at least we all each other. We hope to have others, but we'll see. AEW Revolution, Premium Predictions, ATW View. But until then, I thank all of you, and I'm about to bid you all a fine adieu. But before we conclude, King again, man. It's always a pleasure. It's been a long time since we did this, and it's been long missed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anything you want to promote, any last thoughts regarding anything we discussed or anything we haven't discussed or what's coming up, and where can people find you? Ah, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let me see. And the final thoughts. Um, Right now, this AEW Revolution card is looking kind of light. But I'm hoping right. we get more matches at it. Because yep. if not, then I guess we're going in a new direction with the light matches well the light number of matches but we will find but we will find out next week as the go home show on dynamite but y'all can find me on twitter at amt roman numeral 23 number 23 also find me on instagram at amt roman numeral 23 roman numeral 23 dot 23 there you go. It's as simple as that. And folks, you want to know more about me? Know this, for I am just a simple man and a lifelong fan of professional freaking wrestling. Damn it! But I digress. Find me on the Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Foster1916 for all fans of wrestling. And again, shout out, of course, to our entire ATW family across the Twitter and other uh, platforms, too. As King alluded to, again, next week, we'll be back with the official return of Where It All Began. For the ATW view, AEW Revolution, Premium Predictions 2. We'll see how much of the family we can get on the uh, platform, too. Stay tuned for more on that. I'm, of course, we'll be back with No DQ as we start off the All Elite League. I'll be back with them on their predictions panel. And, of course, we'll host my own city predicting panel ahead of our ATW view next week as well. There will be play of play coverage and also prediction forms and so much more with this as well across the Champions Dragon Multiverse of Media as we enter March. And there's still so much ahead, including the anniversary event, which we might talk about a little bit more after the pay per view uh, then. And also stay tuned for Impact Wrestling coverage this Friday across my simple YouTube channel and the Champions League Multiverse of Media. There will be Super Predicting Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live. And there also will be player play coverage and commentary courtesy of me and James Hebert for Impact Wrestling No Surrender this Friday too. And then following that, Open Mic Night, the fun open forum where we talk about all sorts of things wrestling, hosted by the Renegade J.J. Williams. And please support my friend at Cast the 18 Studios too. But as always, I'd like to conclude, there are no winners, there are no losers, there are no betters. There are just fans with opinions for this passion we all share. At the end of the day, folks, support one another. Respect each other. Protect your mentality, too. Treasure your families. And just enjoy life and enjoy professional wrestling. It's as simple as that. So with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, and tell a friend. Hit the bell as this video goes live or on demand on this channel for me or anybody in and out of ATW and the Deputy General of Diverse Media too. Hit the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Help me keep growing this YouTube community together. It's not, the, con the content creativity is not laying up anytime soon. Neither is our passion, I assure you. Pro wrestling was the last love of Keiji Muto. It is my lifelong love, and I promise you I'm not going to stop that anytime soon. For the entire W crew, for my all elite brother King, we will forever be with the switchblade and we will ever be thankful for the genius that was Keiji Muto. And we now bid you a fine adieu. So until next time, make a positive impact in life and have a good night. It's been a wild February so far, King. We're not done yet. Not done yet. We still got a few more days left and then the March. Madness. Yes, we of are. Of all different sorts. Just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. You got friggin' New Japan Cup. You got friggin' WrestleMania week with every pay-per-view under the sun. I already got Josh Benet's blood sport. Bring up our super card and the Impact Multiverse show mm -hmm. lined up for my week, along with everything else. Yeah, folk, I'm crazy. But I also am ATW. We are ATW. But to be fair, as I'm wearing the pin, 
We are AEW2. For life.